Where do privacy and personal freedom begin and where do they end? Questions that have framed an enduring divide in modern America. One many thought was settled nearly 50 years ago when the Supreme Court affirmed a constitutional right to an abortion. Today, the court answered that question again, this time on a five to four vote, taking away what was regarded as a fundamental right. Right now, new laws banning abortion are taking effect in several states. Just hours after the court overturned the landmark Roe versus Wade decision, leaving it to states to decide whether abortion is legal. Justice Samuel Alito, in his opinion, writing Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. A draft of the decision leaked to the public weeks ago took away the suspense of the moment, but not the euphoria of victory for abortion opponents, nor the sting of defeat felt by abortion rights supporters. Here's the scene right now of crowds gathered outside the Supreme Court in protest and celebration. Our team ready to cover it all, starting with Pete Williams. Outside the court, now ringed with a security fence, opponents of abortion rights cheered. Complete and utter joy that it was finally overturned, but the determination, a steely determination that the battle is not over. Legal abortion on demand! Legal abortion on demand! For others, it was what they were dreading ever since the court signaled in December it was likely to overturn Roe. It feels like a betrayal. It feels like my country doesn't love me and appreciate my body as a woman. The court overturned nearly 50 years of abortion precedence in a ruling that was a first. Never before has the court granted and then taken away a widely recognized constitutional right. The court voted five to four to overturn Roe. Chief Justice John Roberts said going that far wasn't necessary to uphold Mississippi's law banning abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy. The court voted six to three to uphold that law. The majority opinion overturning Roe tracked closely with the version that leaked in May, touching off nationwide protest, including at the homes of some of the court's conservatives. Justice Samuel Alito's majority opinion said no right to abortion is protected by any constitutional provision. The Roe decision, he said, was egregiously wrong and deeply damaging. Like Winston Churchill said, this is the end of the beginning. Um, it's been a 50-year battle to protect unborn children, uh, but we now have those battles in every state. Unlike other court rulings based on a right to privacy, Alito said abortion is different because it involves a potential life. So he said the ruling does not undermine the rights to same-sex marriage or contraception, though Justice Clarence Thomas said the court should take another look at them, too. The ruling does not make abortion illegal, but it's no longer a constitutional right, so that leaves the issue up to each state. It's likely to become illegal soon in about half the nation. Some states have already banned it as of tonight. The rest of the banned states are likely to follow in the coming weeks. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, in a controlling concurrence, said states that ban abortion cannot make it a crime for their residents to travel to a state where abortion is legal to get the procedure. In a joint dissent, Justices Stephen Breyer, Sonia Sotomayor, and Elena Kagan said the court ruling means that from the very moment of fertilization, a woman has no rights to speak of. They say a state can force her to bring a pregnancy to term, even at the steepest personal and family cost. People are going to be heading to the streets, both in the wake of this decision immediately and in the days and months to come, and making clear that the majority of people in the United States support abortion rights. And Pete is joining us now from outside the Supreme Court. Pete, what's it been like out there today? Well, this is the biggest crowd I've ever seen outside the Supreme Court after a decision. It's been building steadily all day, people celebrating and mourning the decisions. And while it does return the issue to the states, the dissenters say there's nothing in this ruling that would prevent Congress from banning abortion nationwide if it ever chose to. Lester. All right, Pete, thank you. The ripple effect was immediate just after the decision. Some of those trigger laws already in effect. Some women unable to get abortion services planned for today. Blaine Alexander with more now from Mississippi. Outside the Mississippi Clinic at the heart of today's Supreme Court decision. We do abortion and we're proud to do abortion. Even though the days for that are now numbered, at the Jackson Women's Health Organization, the requests are only growing. In 10 days, because of the state's trigger law, Mississippi's only abortion clinic will shut down for good. I will tell you that any patient who contacts us, we'll see them. We'll make sure we see them during that 10 days. 
But in some states, change is already happening. Of the 13 trigger law states, abortion is now illegal, with a few exceptions in at least five of them following today's ruling, including Missouri, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, where, through tears, the attorney general signed the certification late today. Restoring to the state of Arkansas the authority to prohibit abortion. In Wisconsin, Planned Parenthood immediately stopped abortions following today's ruling. The medical director had to break the news to patients already in the waiting room. Today, I had to look people in the eye and turn them away when they were seeking abortions. Across the country, emotional reaction on both sides. My first reaction was rage. This is an amazing victory. And while some lawmakers celebrate the decision. This is a profound change in the law in our country and it will save millions of lives of unborn children. Others? My wife's in tears. My kids are incredibly distraught. My sister says I thought the courts were there to protect our freedoms, not roll them back. Back in Mississippi, today's ruling is a victory for Terry Herring. My eyes just filled with tears. This is a day to rejoice. She has spent nearly 30 years fighting to end abortion and says she's proud Mississippi Absolutely. played a role. What does today mean for you? You know, personally, um, you know, we didn't know if this would happen in our lifetime, right? We, we, we've been advocating for a long time. So seeing this happen in my lifetime and knowing that we had the opportunity to be a part of that is, um, a, a, it means us being a part of changing history. But for Tyler Harden, who runs Planned Parenthood in the state. You've gotten dozens of calls since this decision came down. Mm -hmm. Are women scared? Yes, and um, to be honest, I'm scared as well. The closest clinic, she says, you know, will be in Florida, a seven-hour drive. That means that people will have to find funds to travel. People will have to find funds to get hotel rooms, buy food. Is that a feasible option for them? It's not. Blaine joins us now from Mississippi. And Blaine, I know one of the issues, particularly there, is the ability of people to travel out of state. It's particularly hard for many women. That's right, Lester, especially here in Mississippi that has the highest poverty rate of any state in the country, especially among black women. That's a group that many fear will be most impacted by today's decision. Now, in speaking with activists on both sides, one place they agree a focus should be getting women the resources they need for a safe pregnancy and beyond. Lester. Blaine Alexander, thank you. President Biden condemned today's decision, declaring that Roe will be on the ballot in this fall's midterm elections, while conservative Republicans applauded the ruling. Peter Alexander now with more from the White House. A somber President Biden tonight declaring this a low moment for the nation's highest court. It's a sad day for the court and for the country. Now, with Roe gone, let's be very clear. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. The White House mindful of how personal this ruling is, inviting more than a dozen senior aides, all women, to witness the president calling the decision the result of an extreme ideology. It was three justices named by one president, Donald Trump. Make no mistake, this decision is a culmination of a deliberate effort over decades to upset balance of our law. <laughs> Top Republicans touting the ruling as a hard-won victory. The right to life has been vindicated. The voiceless will finally have a voice. It will save countless innocent children. Two prominent senators now suggest they were misled by assurances made during recent confirmation hearings. Roe v. Wade is an important precedent of the Supreme Court. A good judge will consider it as precedent of the United States Supreme Court. Republican Susan Collins slamming today's decision as inconsistent with those justices' testimony. So what comes next? With his authority limited tonight, President Biden's calling on Congress to guarantee the right to an abortion. But Senate Democrats currently do not have the votes for that. The president vowing his administration will protect women's access to FDA-approved medications like abortion pills and contraception and promising to defend a woman's ability to travel to other states where abortion remains legal. 63% of Americans do not believe Roe should be overturned. Democrats, including the nation's first woman vice president, hoping to redirect that outrage to this fall's midterm elections. You have the final word. So this is not over. This fall, Roe is on the ballot. A defining cultural clash 
in a country now even more deeply divided. And Peter, President Biden is suggesting the court's ruling could lead to other personal freedoms being rolled back. What's he saying about that? Yeah, that's right, Lester. The president cited Justice Thomas's majority opinion that the right to contraception and same-sex marriage should be reconsidered. President Biden arguing the court is now taking the country down an extreme and dangerous path. Lester. Peter Alexander from the White House. I want to turn now to you, Michelle Sindor. As we just heard, the president and House Speaker saying this fall, Roe is essentially on the ballot in the midterms. But to what end? Well, much like the impact of this decision, the political fallout was immediate. Ahead of the midterms, Democrats will be hammering home the point to voters that polls show the majority of Americans want abortion to be legal in some form. But the reality is this is not a one-issue election. Democrats will be trying to focus voters on abortion while Americans are juggling multiple challenges, including record high gas prices and historic inflation. Meanwhile, this decision is the culmination of conservative activism and the strategy in the Senate to really create a conservative majority on the court. Now, the question is, will Republican lawmakers face any backlash, or will it strengthen their movement and lead to federal action to ban abortion? What's clear is that abortion will now likely be a top issue in the midterms as this new political landscape takes shape. Lester? Yeah, Mish, thank you. With abortion restrictions likely in more than half the country, some states where it will remain legal are anticipating an influx of patients from elsewhere. Some abortion providers are even relocating. Here's Stephanie Gosk. With the stroke of a pen, the Supreme Court has likely triggered a massive abortion migration in this country. More than 300,000 abortions were performed last year in the 26 states where the procedure could soon be illegal or highly restricted. Now those people may choose to cross state lines. In Tennessee, the attorney general wants the state's six-week ban to start right now. The people of Tennessee, for the first time in 50 years, will have a chance to uh, weigh in on this issue. So this is where we yeah. have, do our abortion procedures back here. The, these are your uh, uh, abortion, two abortion procedure rooms. Mm -hmm. so you, have, you have two rooms. Yep. We recently visited the Choices Healthcare Clinic in Memphis. Soon, the doors to these rooms will be closed for good. Our patients are predominantly black. Uh, the, the majority of them are uninsured or underinsured. They have been bracing for this court decision for months. We just kind of all thought this is going to be really bad for us. And so um, I said to my executive team, there's this place called Carbondale. Carbondale is in southern Illinois, three hours by car from Memphis. It's where they plan to open a new clinic in August. But we're reluctant to show us pictures because of security concerns. Clinician Nakia Grayson will be driving back and forth. Uh -huh. Will it be big enough to handle what is really going to be? Mm. potentially a flood of patients, right? Now, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I think that we will be the only clinic right now in the southern part of Illinois. We will handle as many patients as we can. In some states where abortion will still be legal, access is being expanded. Connecticut passed a law allowing non-physicians to provide abortions. But anti-abortion activists hope increasing support systems during pregnancy will change people's minds. I don't know of anybody that is, or any state that is thinking that they can stop people from traveling to another state. We are going to have to just push even harder than we have been to encourage women to let their baby live and to seek out the resources that are available. But for many of those who choose not to, getting an abortion just got a whole lot harder. Stephanie Gosk, NBC News, Memphis, Tennessee. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.